ladies and gentlemen, the Fantasy Footballers. I'm pretty sweaty. I got a tummy ache. <laughs> that is uh, first time with dancing sharks, I think. Give it up for the sharks. Give it up for the <laughs> sharks. <laughs> you have no idea how sweaty they are. Oh, they are <laughs> headed to the showers <laughs> right now. Welcome to the 10th anniversary Megalith show. Oh, yeah. Shout oh. out to Sleeper for sponsoring this event. Yes, thank you. Shout out to Pristine Auction who supplied so many oh things that we gosh. just threw. Yeah, yeah. So we got more to stuff. throw. And we've got a grand prize over here at Cooper Cup. Hey. hey. Signed helmet. I don't... It's the good stuff. I'm and, not going to uh, throw that. I'm not going to throw the helmet. Unless I need to. Right, right. Watch it. Um, how was the gun? You like the gun? The gun was great. Oh, hey, Insight, because yeah, you're our people. Anyone hear a giant gunshot? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think that was? <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. Was yeah, a, before the show. It was a misfire. Well, we just noticed I went to grab this uh, bad boy, <laughs> and one of the – we had two tanks, thankfully. One was entirely emptied into the gun on accident. <laughs> And it, I would like, have been, it would have been uh, through the roof. Yeah, we would have killed someone. So, um, Thankfully, we didn't. Yeah. Appreciate your patience. Safety, oh, safety first. <laughs> Before we get the show started, which so excited to have you all here for a live Bold Predictions episode today. Which I think we're, we're still 10 years in, 100% of the Bold Predictions that, that is true, right. right? That is right. Crushing them. I definitely didn't say the Jets... Here in LA would win the Super Bowl. And, and dude, then moments later, dude, Aaron Rodgers. That was were, the reaction. You were like four plays away. I know. <laughs> I know. From that happening. But um, we ready for a show? Yeah. And I'm going to need your help on the mailbag. And you're, you can help us on the welcome in as well. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we got two requirements uh, here for the live show. Number one is the mailbag. We know you're going to represent. But number two, the intro. We know everybody at home does the ah, but we want to hear it. I want to feel it. I want to feel it in my heart. 
in my large intestines. I want to feel it everywhere in my body. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> Al, are you ready back there? Uh, he doesn't have is a microphone. A, yeah, I'm going to just go? trust that he's back. I see a light, well, and that's it. Are we good? I well, heard, if it, if I it heard starts, a hoot. we'll be good. All right, go for it. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Baby. Yes. yes. I think they forgot the welcome in part. That's okay. Welcome into the 10th anniversary Megala Show live in Los Angeles. <laughs> Woo. We rowdy tonight. We are. And uh, shout out to Sleeper for sponsoring this event, Pristine Auction. We're so excited. We got a bold predictions episode on the show today, but a whole lot more. We got news to talk about, some controversial news. Ooh! So we'll talk about that. We've got. Um, we do. I am unaware. A- I am unaware of this news. I'm. Well, I guess I missed the news. We'll find out. All and right. um, how many out there with the UDK? Yeah, that's what. That's our people. That's good. That's good. And uh, you can get the UDK UltimateDraftKit.com. A reminder: a portion of every UDK goes to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. We've donated in ten years. Over $250,000 to St. Jude, and that was because of you guys. And us winning fantasy leagues. Come on. That yeah. doesn't hurt. Give us some credit. And we have something fun. We like to do this for the live shows. We have a quick question today, and um, we've had a lot of fun with these over the years, but today we're going to compare a player to a television show, and Mike is going to kick it off. I am. Travis Kelsey. You may have heard of him. Wait, people don't like you. You said it's rowdy. Do you play fantasy football? You should be cheering. Oh, take it easy out there. Take it easy. Don't make us send the sharks after you. (laughs) We'll bring them back out. I appreciate the hometown love, but you're telling me you didn't like Travis Kelsey on your team. You're a bunch of big fat liars. All only, right, all only right. Antonio Gates all for right, that guy. All right, here we go. Travis Kelsey, look, he's given us some of the best fantasy seasons of all time. His peak seasons will go down in history. I'm not sure there's any tight end coming in the future that will ever match what he has done. The run, it's probably the longest we will ever see. And that's why Travis Kelsey is... It's the Simpsons, baby! Look... And because here's the thing about the Simpsons, we're coming to the end (laughs) and that's okay. It's okay. Look, he may not be the difference maker that he once was. See the Simpsons. Yeah. But it's like when the Simpsons are on, I'm still going to watch it. I'm still going to enjoy it. And you know what? We're always going to remember the Lamont of Troy, AKA Travis Kelsey, 2018. Oh, Marge versus the monorail. Kelsey, 2020. Look, the show isn't what it once was. But if you put the new ones on, you're still going to watch it. And you're still going to have a good time. So that's why I try yeah, to see. Yeah, that makes sense. Be, the Simpsons. Yeah. What, I, is it, what does it mean, though? What does it mean, though, if, like, I don't really watch Simpsons. <laughs> you're, you're like, if you put the Simpsons on, I'm like, I'm going to walk out of the room. I don't, I just, I don't really hold care. On, hold Eat on. Eat my shorts. Hold like, what on. Was it, in the 90s? Hold on. Hold on. (laughs) Yes, feed me. You're going to sit in front of a crowd of a thousand people and say you don't watch The Simpsons? Yeah, I don't. I don't. I'm not saying I don't think The Simpsons is an all-time great show. I just don't watch it anymore. Do you guys actually (laughs) actively watch The Simpsons? Yes, they're saying. So did you take it as like bench Kelsey? No, no, I get I get it. I get what you're saying. He's an all-timer. He's not at the top. But I just take umbrage with, I take umbrage with like, I'm still going to watch The Simpsons mm-hmm. if it's on because it's okay. not true. And I'm a, I'm a man of truth. That's great. I can't wait for you to go so I can take a dump on everything you just say. <laughs> yeah. Try it. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, he, he's going last. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm jumping in. Uh, we're going to talk about Alvin Kamara. And um, 
It's a yeah. weird. No, it's no, a no. Weird that's story. that is the that is the correct response. Yeah, no, that is exactly what I wanted <laughs> to hear. Because get this, Alvin Kamara, he is Downton Abbey. <laughs> All right, now just stay with me on this for a second <laughs> and enjoy that picture of Derek Carr. Um, because he doesn't seem like something you should like in fantasy. The side characters are a bit much. I'm not here for a history lesson, right? I don't want to remember the magnificent past of Alvin Kamara. That doesn't help me in fantasy. And it seems like he's so boring to roster because he's going to be so boring to roster <laughs> nobody takes him in the draft with a lot of joy but you're going to watch and you're going to give it a try and you're going to like it this year because this <laughs> was a player who was so boring that he still ended up the number two fantasy running back from weeks four to 15 when he came back. I can feel the crowd, they're like, do I admit that I like Downton Abbey? Yeah, <laughs> this yeah. is my message. I can't tell Just, people that. There's only two, two types of people in the world. There are people who have seen Downton Abbey and they know it's great, and people that haven't yet seen it and they go, that looks so boring. Cause it looks so boring. But what I'm saying is embrace that boring, embrace the history lesson and just don't tell your friends you drafted him. <laughs> right. Just like you don't tell them you watch Downton Abbey. Yeah, Downton Abbey's full PPR. That is like, <laughs> Downton Abbey is 100% like point per reception. It's more valuable than you think it should be. <laughs> For sure. All right. I'm up. Yeah. Yeah. Mike's boo! ready. You re yeah. You ready to crawl? Oh, they will. You will boo this one because you, once, once you understand it, maybe not right off the bat, but Justin Jefferson is. The Office. Yeah, baby. Justin Jefferson is one of the best ever. He is awesome. The Office is fantastic. I, I think it might be my favorite comedy show of all time. But there's bad news for a clan. When Michael Scott left, yeah, it, what wa happened? it wasn't the same. It wasn't as good. And and Captain Kirk is leaving. And I'm telling you right now, look, I know look at that I check. know Justin Jefferson is great. Obviously. This isn't a the, the, it will be bold takes later. He's great. But he's not going to be great for fantasy in the middle of the first round without a quarterback. The same way that the greatest comedy show of all time was not There's as a... good. It wasn't bad, but no one out here is like, oh dude, I I think the I got think the better. Season, I think the seasons without Michael Scott were the best. No, that's why it got canceled. Okay, and, what about and the Lizard there King? Were, there were a lot of Justin Jefferson dynasty managers out there that were yeah. very sad a minute ago. Yeah, well, they're sad. They're going to be sad this year too because you got Sam Darnold, and at least you had a bright spot in in JJ McCarthy, and that stinks that he's gone. You're not a you're big left. Sam fan. I'm not a big Sam fan. The more that I've dug into the numbers and seen his touchdown rates over his career it's putrid and that's where like Justin Jefferson's gonna be fine between the 20s it's gonna have a lot of yards he's going to be I'm not saying he's like the wide receiver 40 but he can't return on middle of the first round value it's almost impossible unless you're up at you know 9 10 11 touchdowns and Sam Darnold's not doing that Sam Darnold is not a good quarterback here's look oh no Sam Darnold has played oh no Mark of the Beast games. Okay, he's played 66 games over six seasons. Mark of the Beast. The, the this real. This can't be your thing, man. No, that, that's, I, can't, my can't thing is the Mark guy. of the Beast. I'm the Mark of the Beast guy. Um, Tell me another podcast that references the Mark of the Beast. Right, it's me. Um, so Warren Sharp points this out uh, on, on qualified completion rates. Um, <laughs> Sam Darnold's completion rate on his career is 59.7%. His career? His career. That Good ranks Lord. 47th out of 48 qualified quarterbacks. Kirk Cousins is number four of 48. That's going to change things, people. Why are we still drafting Justin Jefferson ahead of A.J. Brown and other guys who have good quarterbacks? It's, it, 
it's not saying that he's bad to use logic and be smart. Now, see, Mike, you don't have to dump on his take because he his right. take is kind of like a dump in and of itself. Yeah, 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 it is negative. It is negative. I apologize. I know. And, I, and honestly, look, I was looking at the show doc today. I'm like, man, I am a hateful dude. My, <laughs> yeah. my bold yeah. predictions are really negative. I we want, brought them here to disappoint them. I want more positivity in the show. I got you. you I, but I want... I think, Andy, why don't you talk about how much you love Kyle Pitts? Make it positive. Why don't you bring Kyle Pitts up? You love him. Well, no, hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. Hold on. Because I seem to remember. I've got a golden ticket. <laughs> <laughs> oh! I've got a golden ticket. You know how long I've been saving on to this for this show, baby? He, I have, no. Yeah, eat I it. love Kyle Pitts. Yes, you do. Let me tell you how much you do, Andy. No, this, why and, don't you? Oh, no. Hey. Why don't you read the people what you think about Kyle Pitts? Hey. This is a novel. Andy, Andy has no idea that this is happening yeah, right now. Yeah, we knew. He, he was in the dark, baby. I wondered what was happening when you brought the name up. <laughs> yeah. I was ready to move on. All right, well, let's listen to... I have to read... Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's, a, it's a basically another take swap. Golden ticket version. Let's go. It is the golden ticket, so I guess I have no choice. I'm glad everyone's here. Um, it's time to come clean about something that has been bugging me yeah. for quite a while. I love Kyle Pitts, yeah. and I want the world to know it. <laughs> nice. Oh, okay, because Kyle Pitts is Parks and Rec. Oh! Come on. <laughs> you gotta, you got to be kidding. How did you pull this up? All right. Yeah. I refuse to watch Parks and Rec forever. Everyone said it was great, and I was snooty. That's true. I was slow to listen. I said, nah. I said, I'm too cool for that. Yeah, you really did. And then one day I came to the realization that maybe, just maybe, I was missing out on something great. So I watched, and the beginning of that show sucked. It did? Yeah, first season was pretty rough. Uh, season one was not funny. It was like they had a bad director, like Arthur Smith was in charge. <laughs> oh, why, what a good comp, Andy. Yeah, this is good thoughts of mine. But after season one, they cut some characters, reshaped others, and it literally turned into one of, if not the best, comedy show of all time. Oh, and that's what I think is going to happen with Kyle Pitts. Really? I really think that. A slow start with a bad cast of characters, and then you exit Arthur Smith, exit left, and Desmond Ritter, goodbye, and enter the Rams offense and Kirk Cousins. Kyle Pitts will finish his career as one of the all-time greatest ever to play. Wow. That's bold, man. Because Pitts is not even 24 years old, and Travis Kelsey caught his first pass in the NFL when he was 24. I'm glad I thought of that. Uh, Kelsey had his first 1,000-yard season at age 27. Yeah. Pitts did that at age 21. Whoa. Clearly better. It's a big difference. <sighs> Buckle up. Please keep going. Do not turn off your TV. <laughs> Kyle Pitts will break out this year like season two of Parks and Rec. He is the steal of the draft. And you heard it from me, Andy Holloway. <laughs> yeah, there yeah, we go. Yeah, that's great. That's big of you. I'm not sure why you... Oh, the crowd loves yeah, it. Yeah, Andy. Yeah. Does that mean that golden ticket is gone? Yeah, tear that thing up. Woo! Tear, tear it, it up. up. Tear it up. Carip. Uh, why'd you tell I can't believe that, you pulled that off. Why'd you tell people to turn off, don't turn off your TVs? Well, like, that's what you do when you're done with the show. Yeah, like... And then he's saying, turn it back on. Some people will stop watching I mean, Parks I said and Rec that. after one season. Yeah, but like, we're not... We're a podcast. Well, it was more about watching Parks and Rec. Okay, I'm just saying it was a bad reference. Have another drink. Yeah, it was a, it Have was, another drink, Mike. <laughs> um, we're ready to roll. Welcome to Ready to Roll, presented by Nissan. You got animations I didn't know about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pictures and scripts, and you broke it out. It takes a village. the live show. All right, 
Time for some ready to roll. I thought this would be very interesting. Uh, we have looked at some very um, eye-opening stats, stuff to get you ready to go for the season, and we looked at juicy opening schedules. This is literally ready to roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we we look at those that are going to – like you talk about Jared Goff all the time, how the start of the yeah, season, yeah, it, it's, it's really good. But we also know that there's turnover on the defensive side. So sometimes – bad defenses become better and vice versa. So we wanted to look at every position and whether there were some players, and this is just going to be fascinating. Are there players that just start hot independent of the schedule? Do year they, after year. Yeah, like just they, they're just they're, hot they're starters. Quick starters. The opposite of Derrick Henry and Najee Harris, who, who finished strong and so James, James Conner. Conner. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll start. We've got two quarterbacks that have, been hot starters. I brought one up frequently. He goes late in drafts, but Tua, Tua Tungavailoa. You had those are like late season booers because you can't be a first part of the season booer. <laughs> There's not a name I can say. Seriously, we're hot tonight. Yeah, but Tua. If you remember two years ago, that forty point plus, you know, the six touchdown game started as the quarterback seven through the first ten weeks of the season, and then last year he was. The quarterback won in week one. He was the quarterback five through the first eight weeks, and then I traded him to Mike. And then – Yeah, I cooled him off. And then he cooled him off. <laughs> so – Say grab an icy, dude. And, and then another player that's not being talked about because of the injury and because I think people are hesitant, but Kirk Cousins – Oh, you love him. He's well, going to be one of, of the greatest of all time. Cause of, yeah, because of Pitts. Um, but over the last three years, he's averaged over 20 fantasy points per game through the first half of the season, and we even forget how good he was before the injury last year. He was the quarterback six in fantasy. He has my favorite player, Kyle Pitts. He's mm -hmm. got Bijan. He's got Drake London. You talked about Darnell Mooney as like a late value. So those are two hot starters at the quarterback position that we've seen for multiple years. Sure. Now, wide receiver, Tyree Kill. I mean, that it makes sense because Tua has been such a hot starter, but over the last two years, he's averaging over 100, 120 receiving yards Per game. Like, that—that that is an outrageous pace. I think that people forget how fast Miami is every start of the year. Yeah. Well, like, they think, okay, you know, they can't be that fast. I mean, it, it makes sense. I mean, you're in Florida, right? When the, when the cold weather comes in, you just you yeah. don't know what to do. Yeah. You're used to the heat. And then Stephon Diggs, we all remember last year. Yeah, this one's interesting. This one is, is pretty fascinating. Weeks one through nine, almost 18 points per game. Wide receiver three in that span. Last year. Wide receiver 10, or a week 10 on, just absolutely terrible. And this has actually been something that, that he has done to us. It, it was really magnified this past year. But Stephon Diggs has been a hot starter and not, not, not as hot at the end. Yeah, 16 fantasy points per game in September, 15 in October, 13 in November, 11 in December. Yeah. For whatever reason, he has slowed down over the course of the season. So I don't know what's going to happen in Houston. He feels like one of those players that we're not drafting a lot of, but I still think we acknowledge that that could be yeah, he, a situation where they do find a lot of fantasy value early. He could definitely get off to a hot start. Another guy that I'm not drafting much of, but when we're looking at this data where I saw um, man – I'm like, am I going to get You got? don't want to draft him. I don't want to draft him, but I'm starting to think I'm wrong here. And the data says it. And what's going on around the team says it's Josh Jacobs, Yay. the running back for the Green Bay Packers. He has – yeah, I mean, okay, people okay. are in. People are in. So here's, here's the data. Oh, in 2021, he had over 13 fantasy points per game. He was the only running back not to bust in the first half. The first half, no bust games. Obviously, he was great that year. But I don't think – we realized last season he was actually the running back seven in the first half before, you know. It didn't feel like last year as a whole didn't feel good. Yeah, well, 20, 2022, RB7 in the first half. Last year, RB5 in the first half before the wheels fell off. And so you're going like, okay, are, are the wheels gone? Is, is he on blocks? You know, is he, is he a car <laughs> raised up and he's just – Keep him going. He's done. Or he's been stolen. Does he just start fast? And – you know, when you start fast, right now, the report came out today that both A.J. Dillon and Marshawn Lloyd are questionable for week one with the hot starter of Josh Jacobs. It's like, okay, goodness gracious, is, is he going to work? So now I'm, I haven't done my main drafts yet, and I'm moving Josh Jacobs up, and I'm going, all right, maybe there are some players, uh, you don't draft to trade. You don't draft them 
only to trade them. But you go, like these players, I know that they can start hot and have the wheels fall off, so maybe midway through the season I'll trade them. We'll talk about one of those guys later. And a tight end, I just want to remind you guys, Mark Andrews has been a model of consistent C. <laughs> what? what? What's that? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Did you reboot halfway through I don't the know, sentence? Was that a bit? Mm. Powering down. <laughs> that's what just how. That's just how I say consistent. C. C. Uh, all right. In twenty twenty one, he was the tight end two. <laughs> I don't know. Through the first six games. In twenty twenty two, he was the tight end two through the first six games. In twenty twenty three, he was the tight end two through the first six games. So he's pretty good, and <laughs> trade him before he gets injured is basically it. But he's he's a hot starter, and you know I, I think right now I'm I'm scooping him up in the fifth round. Sometimes that's oh, that's an delicious. amazing value, and you can't draft guys to trade them unless they do well. You don't trade you know between your draft and kickoff very often. So it's like you want guys that start start hot. I think Mark Andrews is is a great pick for that. Yeah, no, it makes sense, and um, I was a little disappointed you didn't take him in our last mock draft. Because I didn't know if you were starting to fade, but I guess you're not. Mm -mm. You're very consistent. See about him. Yeah. Um. All right. That was ready to roll. Presented as always by Nissan. Find your path in the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder Rock Creek. Whether that's rocky trails or snowy roads, there's plenty of places to show off this SUV. Learn more at NissanUSA.com. <sighs> Intelligent four-wheel drive cannot prevent collisions or provide enhanced traction in all conditions. Always monitor traffic and weather conditions. Yeah. Let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. All right, we do have some fun stuff to talk about. Maybe not fun. Maybe we should have gotten you a deck of cards, Mike. But um, Steelers head coach Mike Tomlin. Michael. <laughs> Michael. He said he's not going to name a starter at quarterback. Michael. Until the end of the work week. The work week. Yeah. Wait, is, is that, that a true? Is quote? that what it says? Michael. <laughs> what is the work week for them? Is that Friday? I mean, here's here's the thing, guys. Book it. Week one, Steelers slaughter their opponents because they have no idea who this. They have no clue that Russell Wilson's about to be the starting quarterback for the Steelers. Mr. Tomlin, what are you doing? This is an embarrassment. You don't question Mr. Tomlin. I do. I do not. He has, what is this, like 17 years in a row of him being over five. He's, he's one of the best coaches in the league. I think that this says something maybe tonight. about. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I, mean I, I, I watched his interviews this week before this quote came out, and he was still saying, like, nothing has changed with the order of my quarterbacks. Now he's saying into the work week, <laughs> is, there, is there any chance it's not Russell Wilson? No. Yeah, okay. That's why this is dumb. All right, I see this that point. This is budget magician <laughs> yes. material. Yeah. Now, yeah. Matt Nagy's like, oh, man, there Tom was, was about to crush. <laughs> there was a point. What an advantage. <laughs> this offseason where it seemed like they stole Russell Wilson and they stole Justin Fields and that they were going to fix situation at quarterback. How do you feel about that now? I think they're going to play good defense and try to run the ball. So it brings up points about George Pickens, too, because what's the latest on Brandon Ayuk? Nothing. Anybody know? Yeah, anybody yeah. in California here you, with insight? Y'all y'all live here. What's going on? I believe the last report we saw was an active report of there's nothing to report. <laughs> yeah, it was That's like, not a joke. Like, like they were reporting of nothing to report. <laughs> And I am like, we're drafting now. Like people are, this is like the biggest draft weekend of the year. And who's, who's drafted their league of record. Okay. Okay. Is there anybody drafting right now during the show? Yeah. We got a handful. Yeah. You got a handful and a couple yeah, of liars. See, they said yes, but they don't have phones out. No liars. All right. Um, but, but this was fun in games when it was like, oh, we'll just wait to see what happens, and then we'll figure out Debo, and we'll figure out Kittle. And then on the other side, I love George Pickens. If he's the guy in right. Pittsburgh, what do you do now if you're actively in a draft and at any moment, because the, the, the report that nothing's happening also said the trade's still on the table. Like the 49ers, if they can't work a deal out, they can just click, click the accept button, basically. My so my what do you do with opinion, Pickens? My honest opinion is... Find your stance 
Like don't don't sit on the fence because when you sit on the fence, you know what goes right in the crotch. Ooh, you yeah. don't want that. The fence. It's not. You no, ever no, done they, that? I think they get it's it. It's not good. Yeah. Especially don't sit on the pole. <laughs> uh, like you know, you want to go. You want to go to the whole wide right, part. Right, yeah, yeah, I got it. You're going I got to. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Pick your stance. How it's going to end up one way or the other. To me, it's Ayuk plays for the 49ers, and that's how I am drafting. So wait, wait, wait. I want to. I want to challenge that for a minute. Okay. Because. You're drafting that way. I I presume you think it is worse for him fantasy wise if he changes, right? If to if, go to the Steelers, if he goes to the Steelers, I do. Okay, so right now he is going uh, on sleeper at the three o two. He's going. He's going. Uh, like I love. I love Brandon Ayuk. I I legitimately in my heart watching him play. I think that he is a you're a believer, a, a top tier player who deserves the contract that is that I think he will sign. And if he goes to somewhere like Pittsburgh, over time, he will become a true elite fantasy football player. But at this point, if you're switching right now, that's rough. It, like it, it's brutal for this season. So, and, and I thought he was being overdrafted as a 49er. I, I think he will be a top 20 guy, easy, and he'll give you spike weeks. But I think, like he's being drafted above. Debo, he, he is he is he is wide receiver thirteen. Debo is wide receiver and, fourteen. And as much as I believe in Brendan Ayuk, I wouldn't do that. Right, I, I wouldn't either. The the entire round, other than Stephon Diggs in the third, I, I would not draft any of those guys over Brandon Ayuk as of today, which is Mike Evans, Nico Collins, Jalen Waddle. Like I would rather have those guys over Brandon Ayuk with the unknown of we we don't know where he's playing football. Does the situation change how you view Kittle? So uh, it is a little bit of the flip, right? Debo Samuel, I think, is right now being drafted at a good spot if Brandon Ayuk shows up. Kittle is being drafted at a good spot if Ayuk is on the roster. If he leaves, there is built-in value that that is is already there. So I'm I'm in love with those two picks right now in fantasy because if Brandon Ayuk resigns and he's there week one, I I don't think I made a mistake. And if he gets traded, I've got incredible value. All right, and then uh, one one more piece of information here: the preseason week three. There have been some games played, and oh yeah, normally we wouldn't report on this player. Oh, Jason, <laughs> Jason can that you? That was a full spit take. <laughs> Were you remembering? I literally or spit just... on my laptop. I just remembered what happened today. So uh, it Tra was awesome. Trey it Lance. It was not awesome. It was awesome. Trey Lance. Um, Trey Lance time played a full game. Yeah, he did. Do you got some numbers for me? I do. Okay, let's see how we did. Trey Lance, 323 yards, a passing touchdown, 11 for 90 on the ground with a 46-yard rushing touchdown. This is exactly what the Trey Lance Hive has signed up for. Those are elite, Those are elite incredible. fantasy oh, wait a numbers. Second. I do have one more. Five interceptions. Five interceptions. And two fumbles in well, one game. Well, in the preseason, against preseason, like the whole game, meaning against backups. There's, How do you throw five interceptions against those backups? Those guys are spicy, man. They're playing for a job. What happened, man? 11 what for 90 happened? on the ground. What happened is uh, it's over, yeah. it's over yeah. everybody. He's yeah. not good. <laughs> All right, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Are you guys ready for some bold predictions? Let's do it. Ridiculously bold predictions. All right, I'm scanning I'm scanning the audience here cuz I wanted to make sure that this guy's no one's wearing his jersey in the first few rows cuz I'm not sure you're going to like what I'm going to say here, but um Brace yourselves. No, I'm he loves sorry. Kyle Pitts. They, I know. Take Clearly, care. I love Kyle Pitts. Yeah. He's the best. Um, I'm surprised he didn't give me a jersey to wear the rest of the I show. I should have. Um, here's bold prediction number one for me. And I'm not excited to say this. I just, I just believe it. Um, Anthony Richardson is not going to be a top 10 quarterback in 2024. <laughs> I think I think it's mixed. I think it's mixed out there. And I am I'm sorry, but this is not happening this year. And he is being he he is unproven, inaccurate, and overdrafted. And in fantasy, this might work out at some point in time. I think it probably will. Like 
I'm not Trey stupid. Lance any day, baby. Yeah, <laughs> any day. Yeah. This has a lot of Trey Lance vibes. But, but but here's the problem: is that last year he was a rookie in Indianapolis, and he was the 108th player off the board in fantasy, 10th round. This year, after two games played, which they lost two full games, two thank full you. games, two injuries, and two losses in the full games that he played. By the way, yeah. he's now the 52nd player off the board. So two games. Five rounds. Yeah, we like what we saw. For Anthony Richardson. People, yeah, I mean, that, that is true. People are, they're excited about the potential. But here's what blew my mind. He has started 17 total games since high school. 17. No. That's, That's 17. Not, that is not he true. Is, Wait, he has, double check your work. He has double a, check your work. I, it's <laughs> beep boop confirmed. <laughs> Whoa, that was quick. AI's good. Yeah. Um, no, do not check AI <laughs> for fantasy takes. No. It no, says that, stuff that's, that's just true. factually wrong nonstop. 477 total passes he's thrown since 2019 as a quarterback. So when you talk about inexperienced, like Trey Lance could teach him a thing or two <laughs> is what I'm saying. And then, <laughs> and then I'm telling you, he's also – Historically inaccurate. Like in college, he was a 54% passer. That's bad. You take That's away over half, man. You take <laughs> away the screen game. This blew my mind. You take away just screen passes. He's under 50%. Oh, as that's a under half, Mike. Crap. Yeah. <laughs> I have no rebuttals. Last year, there wasn't a top 10 fantasy quarterback under 64%. Okay. Mm. And over the last like five years, the high, the lowest was 60%. Now it was Jalen Hurts, and you're hoping for that season out of him. But their schedule is rough. They're favored in four of their first 13 games. So rusty Anthony Richardson, who didn't get to play, who's basically like a rookie with a, you know, an asterisk there, a sophomore with an asterisk. Who's also looked like trash in preseason. Hey, you take he, it easy. He's looked really, really bad. And now you have to spend a fifth-round pick for him. So Tank Dell, goodbye. You don't get Tank Dell. Yes, I do. George Kittle, see ya. Goodbye. T. Higgins, nope, not on my team because I took Anthony Richardson. And so he has to take that big leap forward. And I think the ride is going to be – there's going to be games when you're like, oh, my gosh. Like, he has everything. He's going to run, and he's going to get into the end zone just like he did in a couple of those games last year. But I think, you, I think you're seeing it with where Michael Pittman's being drafted. I think there are doubts about the accuracy. So, you know, you know how many games – that so he has 17 games played since high school. Sure. You know how many games Jaden Daniels has? 18. 55. <laughs> we don't make it up, people. 55 games played. He is five rounds later. He is a prolific runner. He has the same opportunity, I think, as Richardson because they're both basically rookies. To me, this is the most overdrafted player in fantasy. I'm sorry, but that's my bold. Prediction. I actually like it. I'm saying no. I I hate that I Things like. Things are going great for me this year. <laughs> My bold prediction was all booze last year. It was, yeah. Tooth out. I'm done. I'm leaving. All right. I'll, I'll do your second one. Yeah. <laughs> all right. It, all right, Mike. It is like it. Does it give you pause? It's unfortunately statistically compelling <laughs> <laughs> but i mean as you learned on the show the other week i don't care about stats right you're no. high very high but team. he runs enough maybe you'll be it's all in. about feel yeah oh. fire in your gut all right i have a savior for your running back room everybody oh, do you know i've been talking about him all off season my faith has not trembled one bit no, Joe Mixon. Yeah, the no, guesses guy's, are yeah. coming. No, 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 no. This man is being drafted as the RB45. Whoa. He is suave. He will save your teams, Mr. Rico Dowdle. It's quite, quite the introduction. Rico Dowdle. I don't think they like it. Rico now, suave. I don't care. You know what hurts the most, Jason? The truth. Rico Dowdle finishes this season as a top 20 running back despite being drafted in the double-digit rounds. And here's, here is why. 
he has a ma- look, look, massive opportunity coming up for the Dallas backfield. He's only 26. He has the size, the frame, 5'11", 213. I like it. Look. I wish it was 215, but I'll accept it. <laughs> man- just eat a burger. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> right before game just, day? Yeah, just, just drink a, a gallon burrito. of water. Hydrate up. Look, he can handle the workload. In college, he was a true three-down guy. Last year, he was explosive. Dowdle, last year, per player profiler, ninth, ninth among running backs in yards created per touch. Last year, despite the lack of snaps, Dowdle had four games of double-digit fantasy points. That's the same, uh, the same as Tajay Spears, who people seem infatuated with on a crappy offense. They're like, hey, Tajay Spears, look, look. That is their voice. Last year. <laughs> Last, this is the test of Tennessee voice. That's yeah. the accent. I think mm-hmm. I nailed it. Yeah. Last year, 50% of the Dallas drives resulted in a score. They were averaging 30 points per game. Tony Pollard is vacating 16 carries inside the five. And despite uh, the wisdom of Jerry Jones saying, hey, we're all in, I mean, those are words. Those are not actions. He meant the grave. <laughs> those, are, those are not actions of Jerry Jones. His big action of all in was I'm going to bring in 29-year-old Ezekiel Elliott, who may as well be 39 years old at this point because he's carried the ball over 2,000 times. His yards per carry. 2,000? His yards per carry the last three years, 4.2, 3.8, 3.5. Do you see where this is going? It's going in a negative direction. Look, it is an ambiguous backfield. In preseason, Rico Dowdle was the guy. You know, first six snaps with the starters, and then he was put on ice because they believe in Rico Dowdle. All reports out of Dallas training camp, Dowdle is the player who has the most juice at the running back position, the athletic. He has to be the favorite to lead the team in rushing. I shared the stat in the 10 tips and tricks of over the last five years, eight and a half teams, Per year, they don't have a top 24 running back drafted. And yet, on average, we see five running backs from those teams break into the top 24. And I think that is Rico Dowdle who will lead the Dallas Cowboys in rushing. And Ezekiel Elliott, it's done, man. It is absolutely over. I don't care how much power his name carries. When they start playing football and they can't move the ball, just like last year, eventually they're like, this isn't working. Go to Dak. Go to CD. And it will work with Rico Dowdle, who will finish as a top 20 guy, and he will save your running back room. But, but, oh, Mike! goodness gracious. But, 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 Mike! Voice of public yeah, opinion. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, how come last year they went away from Pollard and he finished as the running back 50? <laughs> Dowdle did. That was last your voice, year. Your voice is struggling. Yeah. I don't know. I, sc- I over-screamed in the <laughs> intro. Look. Over the last five years, a top 20 running back, they averaged 900 yards and nine rushing touchdowns. Zeke, just a couple years ago, when he was still not great and he was 27, he was still a top 20 back when he was averaging 3.8 yards per carry. You give Rico Dowdle more work, more work inside the five, which I think that they will do. Foot Clan, Foot Clan, fine. Find somebody that loves you like Mike loves Rico Dowdle. Oh, man. Excuse me. We're here to help you. Excuse me. Rico Suave, put some respect on his name. Okay, all right. All right, that's all right. fair. We could call him Rico Suave, but I think I think what I think you're 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 you know you you talk about you're the correct. Sti- yes, the statistics thank you. making sense for Andy, and I think the statistics do actually make sense for Ezekiel Elliott here to finish as a top twenty back. <laughs> oh no! No, go, go ahead. ahead, go ahead, waste your picks on Zeke. I dare you. I think we got to have a Zeke v Rico Suave oh, water bet. We got to do it. Water bet. Easy money. All right. All right, Jason. All right, all right. Let's have. You guys want to hear from my, Jason? My first bold prediction that I, I think the entire world is behind. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Foot Clan, prepare yourself. Dennis Allen, the head coach of the New Orleans Saints, will be fired after week five. <laughs> the biggest cheer of the night. Freedom! <laughs> you don't like that guy. This dude uh, sucks. 
Okay, look, it's fun in fantasy. We've had a long lineage of head coaching villains, right? Oh, we used to, oh gotta yeah. Gotta have one. We used to love dunking on. Two. Oh, yeah. We, uh, Adam Gase, number, the number two, Jeff Fisher. Yeah. Last year was Arthur Smith. This year it's Dennis Allen, the short term head coach <laughs> of the New Orleans Saints. He is maybe the worst coach I've ever seen. But also, Dennis Allen is so unlikable, I can't believe it. <laughs> this dude sucks. His persona <laughs> is that he's high and mighty and that he is the brightest shining star and instead he is the biggest whining excuse maker I've ever seen at head coach. This dude uh, sucks. <laughs> so, hold on. I feel like... I feel like 75% of your argument so far is this dude sucks. It should be 90%. My guy will work on that. We joked about a month ago that on the footcast, I think it was, that Dennis Allen is clearly he's driving a vet. He's got a Corvette, right? Oh, like, yeah. He's oh, one yeah. of those guys driving around his vet. I looked into it. We were wrong. He drives a bus, and he drives it over his players, and he drives it over his coaching staff. Okay, every single time he is at the podium, wow. all he does is blame everyone else. Beep, beep. Beep, beep. You suck. Beep, beep. My teammate, my, my player, you suck. Unless you're Taysom Hill. The guy's oh, in, yeah, love, he loves in Hill. love with Taysom Hill. Oh, my oh, yeah. gosh. But, like, if you look at the offensive coordinator from last – oh, wait, no, he got fired. But the defensive coordinator also got fired. Not Dennis Allen's fault. Not is the coordinator's. You, uh, okay, so here it is. Look, oh, I'm saying he gets fired after five weeks. Here's why. I've got a three-tiered process. <laughs> Tier one, his coaching sucks. <laughs> Tier two, his personality sucks. Okay, all okay. right, we're up to Tier two. three, his schedule sucks. Okay. All right. Okay, all right, let's talk about tier one. He's not a good football coach. Uh, he was, you might not remember this, and he will be so grateful if you don't. He was the Raiders head coach for three years back in 2012 uh he went four and 12 year one. Oh, that did. okay we're, we're building we're building yeah, we're building yeah. he didn't get fired next despite, year's gonna be great despite going four and 12 didn't get fired came back another year he went four and 12 okay we're building two, we're consistent. Consistent. Day. and See. obviously got fired. no he didn't get fired instead he went oh and four to start <laughs> the next year finally got fired you know who his quarterback was then this is wild Derek Carr <laughs> his current quarterback he locked into getting the Saints head coaching job. He didn't, like, win the gig. Sean Payton left this franchise in a, in a tissy and, like, was like, hey, you, he's the head coach. Okay, so now what has he done? He's been sub-500 with a great defense and good talent. Uh, he has the lowest winning percentage of all 32 head coaches in the NFL. He, he's won 34% of his games as a head coach. After going 9-8 and eight last year, which is his greatest accomplishment of all time, mm. also, he did have the league's easiest strength of schedule. Um, Saints fans were literally raising money online to put up fire Dennis Allen billboards in New Orleans He's Saints. that likable? He's that likable. Uh, they tied for the second-best turnover margin at 11, and yet he had just one win against the playoff team. It, he's just a bad coach. That's and, tier one. Yeah, that, that's tier one. <laughs> Uh, this guy, nobody has a bad, dude. I can't stand this. Guy. Have you I, filed legal documents? If it's not clear, I can't stand this guy because I think it's clear. I I watch how he talks about like I would hate being I would hate being a player for a coach like that. You look at how players James rally got around. out. Yeah, Jameis got out. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. Okay, number two, his personality sucks. Every interview, he looks like a stressed and disappointed uncle. <laughs> Not a dad, an uncle. He's like, you have no respect here. Why are you talking? <laughs> Here's what he said about Kendra Miller this offseason. It's hard to make the team when you're in the training room all the time. Also, quite frankly, since we drafted him, there hasn't been a whole lot of new information other than what I saw on college tape because he hasn't been available. You whiny baby. The guy's been hurt. I don't know if he could pick up the system because I haven't seen him out there. You oh whiny gosh. baby. Look, Harbaugh has... Justin Herbert go down and Lad McConkey go down. He's you don't gonna, see him up at the podium being like, I don't even know if Lad can do it. Oh, no. He's been injured. Oh, Jay, Jay. <laughs> the man has Quentin Johnston on his team, and I don't hear 
And no, he's, and he's defending Quentin yes, Johnson because he, he's that's trying what to build leader up his, does. He's trying to build up his team. Um, yeah, I don't know. That player sucks. At like Perry. Him. Here's what he said about another young player. At Perry. He's been fine, doing fine in anything. Is not going to end up cutting it. He has to do some things, catch our eye, and impress us. And so I'm still waiting for that from him. That was when he was doing good things. Oh my, this dude uh sucks. <laughs> All right, tier three. Oh, oh no, his schedule sucks. So. If you are a Saints fan, please root with me for them to lose against the Panthers in week one. This is for the good of your franchise. Yeah, it could be week one. Because you should win. You should beat the Panthers. You're four-point favorites. Okay, but if you lose, oh, it'll be so good for the future of your franchise. Week two, on the road in Dallas. Week three, against the Philadelphia Eagles. Week four, against the division-winning Atlanta Falcons this season. Week five. <laughs> week did you just reference the future yeah, in did. your argument? Yeah, he did. I did. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> Bold prediction, 1.5. Um, and, then, and then week five, on the road against Kansas City. If he doesn't get fired by then when he is 1-4 or 0-5, we're in luck because two weeks later, Sean Payton comes back to the bayou. Ooh, that will be fun, and I promise – he will send him home with a pink slip. You want to know why Sean Payton personally installed this guy, Dennis Allen, as the future head coach? Because he knew he was coming back to coach, and he's like, dude, I would love one team to be coached by that guy. That's, That's an one easy dub. Don't worry about That's an easy dub. <laughs> I mean, last year, I don't know if you guys know the, right. the details of this story, but uh, you know, against Atlanta last year, this year's future champion of the division, right. um, they were up – it was like 41 to 17 yeah, yeah, yeah. and and the the whole team wanted to get Jamal Williams a touchdown and it came to Dennis Allen it, and, and Dennis Allen said no victory <laughs> formation well, and so the get, team he goes no <laughs> victory formation and so the team goes out there James Winston, the problem, yeah. James Winston was uh, behind center and he the whole team decides in the huddle we want to get him the, the touchdown. So they, they disobey the coach, which, first of all, huge sign of respect. Yeah, um, yeah big time. Clearly, <laughs> clearly the coach has the respect and just loves working with his team, and his team loves working with him. Oh, man. And then afterwards, when they got the touchdown for Jamal Williams, and the whole team was happy, Dennis Allen came out after the major victory, one of his few, and, and said, I can't – like, he threw Jameis Winston under the bus, threw the team under the bus, apologized profusely, said that was, you know, wrong of them. He just doesn't care about his – he doesn't care about his teammates and his players the way, and his coaching staff the way that he should, and that will result in him getting fired, I think, after week five. Wow. And I think all Saints fans wow. want that. What do we think? I've been – I've been – love it. They love it. Tell us – tell us what you really think, Jay. Yeah. It's emotional for me. Yeah, no, I, I, I pick up on that. Week five is intense. I just think – like, I watch all these – press conferences it's my job I watched 32 coaches talk and there's only one that I'm like this dude sucks <laughs> I mean just like he I would not want yeah that's tough yeah I mean I, I wouldn't want to be his friend is that too far no no, no I, I think great, you, I got you great crossed news. the line so long ago okay, all right. <laughs> so great, long ago great like news, 15 Jay. minutes he doesn't want to be I don't friend. think he's gonna want to be your friend yeah, no I either. think this we gotta not get Dennis that the out menace. there All right, bold prediction number two. You ready? Oh, my goodness. You thought you liked me. Yeah. The Rams are back. <laughs> they win the NFC West. Puka and Cup, they're both top ten wide receivers in 2024. Now, I'm not going to pretend... It. They love it. I'm not going to pretend it doesn't hurt as a Cardinals fan to have this near me because it does. But is, is it sweaty wearing a Rams jersey under your shirt over there? The Rams are back. The Rams are back. Okay. Tell me why. And people can't see it. But the Rams are back this year, and it means that both of those wide receivers that you're trying to decide between, they're both finishing in the top ten this year. When – 
When Kyron returned from IR from week 12 on, the Rams averaged 31 points a game in this offense. That's a lot. Sean McVay came out and said, he literally said, I can't believe I ever considered retiring. He loves this team. He loves these players. He says Cooper Cup is the reason that he coaches. They went out and found Puka Nakua, who broke every record. Both guys healthy, both on the field. The defense, everyone wants to pay attention to the fact that Aaron Donald is gone, and that is huge. That's a big deal. But this was a defense that was coming along already. They made great draft picks. They put Jared Verse into that defense, and they are making great strides. And here, unlike the Saints, they are favored in every single game from weeks 5 through 13 this season. Every single game in that stretch. What about the first four? <laughs> I am selective in my bold <laughs> prediction, Mike. But this idea of them being both top 10 receivers, this is not as uncommon as you think it would be. Antonio Brown and Juju did it in 2018. Evans and Godwin did it in 2019. Adam Thielen did it twice. What? <laughs> what? That's right. Weird. Once with Diggs. Once with Jefferson. I don't remember. Yeah, it, well, it happened. <laughs> Tyreek and Waddle did it in 2022. A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith did it in 2022. Wait, who? Jalen, Jalen Waddle? Jalen Waddle did it. Oh, that guy's good. Yeah. Um, no one did it last year. I think both of these guys do it this year. And how does it happen? Consolidation of targets. These are the two best weapons in the offense. When they played together, they both were on pace for over 140 targets each. That'll get it done. They are a dominant pair. <laughs> what was this? Just, just the one clap. The one clap. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, oh, no, now you're happy. It was one person. <laughs> Fantasy players trying to decide who is going to be the one. They're both going to be wide receiver ones this year. And even though it goes against everything that I believe and want to believe as a Cardinal fan, I have to acknowledge the Rams are back and they're winning the division. They're winning the division. All right, Pander Bear. I, it doesn't feel like pandering. The Harbaugh fans out there don't like it. A new Pander Bear yeah. emerges from the shadows. How, how does Los Angeles butt taste? <laughs> Tastes delicious. It does. I've been there. <laughs> All right, Mike, what do you got? All right. Well, speaking of... Los Angeles quarterbacks. Okay. Once upon okay. a time. Jared Goff. Top five quarterback, and he's going to win the MVP of Whoa! the NFL this season. Whoa! Oh, my goodness. Motor City MVP. That's right. I appreciate Jared Goff? Jared I appreciate that the crowd, look, you can see beyond the stripes of your own team. That was your guy once upon a time, and seeing him have success, it's great. Look, Jared Goff, the Lions have gone from, meh. <laughs> right? No, yeah, no I think they went from, meh. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Why well, didn't go? My sound effects were not all the way back, backdated. Oh, okay. Look, exciting upstart. NFC North champs. Should, should have won the NFC championship, and they're putting it all together. Jared Goff, he finally does it. A magical season for both the Lions and fantasy football. When Jared Goff, is, when he's got the suds after the game because he's shirtless, you know what's tattooed across that chest? Home and dome games, baby. Home, Home and dome. Home and dome because that's what he needs. Look, he's played 17 games at Ford Field the last two years. Do you know what his full – that's a full season of games. 17. 17, yeah, you got what it. What he has put up. Over 4,700 passing yards and 43 passing touchdowns. He should when, play only home games. When, <laughs> what is yeah. he doing going on the road? When we say Jared Goff dominates at home in the Dome, that is not an understatement. Look, six of seven top 12 finishes last year. They were indoors. The Dome. And this year, 14 of the Lions' 17 games will be played indoors. That hair the air conditioning, it will be flowing. The elements are the enemy of Jared Goff, but that's what's the great about are this the year. Enemy. Yeah. He, is, he is inside. Look, last year, QB7, 4,500 yards, 30 passing touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns. We looked at top, at top five quarterbacks since 2018 who are not mobile guys. That's why this is bold. To get in the top five, it is extremely difficult. Brady, Stafford, 
Rodgers, Matt Ryan, Ben Brady, Roethlisberger. Brady. <laughs> Brady. Brady. Look, an average of 4,700 passing yards and a TD rate of 6-plus percent. Guess who averages 6-plus percent on his touchdown or on his passing attempts for touchdowns when he's indoors? Jared Goff. <laughs> Dude, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> you absolutely Dude, nailed it. Knew it. Nice Reminder, guess. 14 of 17 games are indoors. The Lions, look. He just said that a minute ago. Yeah, because I got to drive the point in, man. It's, just, it's a, it's a speech-giving technique. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> nice you say it twice. Yeah, exactly. Look, right now, every Lions game, every Lions game has a projected total of over 47 points. The over-unders are absolutely sick. Sick for the Detroit Lions. Now, let's talk about MVP, right? He's a quarterback. Quarterbacks win. And you're the guy who says he's going to win the MVP. That's Mike right. right. That I am that guy, unfortunately. Look, he's a quarterback. Check 11 years in a row. Double-digit win team. I'm gonna yeah, check, that's going to happen. I'm going to check that box off for him. And look, the Lions are going to lead the NFL in scoring because, did you hear this part? 14 of 17 <laughs> games. <laughs> no, look, like in all seriousness – it really matters to Jared Goff that he's playing indoors. And he, like he, this is not anti-Jameer Gibbs by any means. Jameer Gibbs is an elite pass-catching weapon. This team can be high T because of their coach, and yet that dude up there, Dan Campbell, guns Mahoney, he respects the pass. Like Jared Goff is going to put up great numbers, and I'm calling for an outlier season. I'm calling for a top-five finish and the league MVP. Thank you. <laughs> was he in, out of curiosity, I don't know this answer, was he in my guy consideration? No, because this is called a bold prediction. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. This is not called a prediction. Okay, okay, there's the bold, got it. Um, All right, why I guess. Oh, it, my Why don't gosh. you take it down a notch, Jay? Yeah, I will. Tighten up them <clears throat> cheeks. It's Los called Angeles. a bold prediction. However, this is one that I – Sadly, actually believe in. So I will go so far as being bold and call this a prediction. No. Josh Allen goes from hero to zero. Oh. Yeah, that's not going to come back to bite this you. This is a really, really hard case to make against Josh Allen. I mean, over the last four years, Josh Allen was the quarterback one, the quarterback one, the quarterback two, and then the quarterback one. So you're like, and he's drafted as the quarterback one now. He should be. He's a hero. In most people's rankings, he's the quarterback one. I mean, there, there's, there's, it makes sense. He is a great passer, and he is mobile. He has a lot of rushing upside. But I want to go over a couple of things. Now, this bold prediction of hero to zero is really – mid-year we talked about earlier how players often have a great start to the season and a bad finish look at Patrick Mahomes last year he was unbelievable the first half of the season he looked like he was going to be winning everybody fantasy championships him and Kelsey were on fire how many people had Patrick Mahomes last year did you draft Patrick Mahomes I see people covering them, their eyes raise your hand There's if some you people crying raise people your hand if you won a championship with Patrick Mahomes last year. We, got we have one, one, two, one we have over here. Okay, one, two, two people in the world. Three I liars. Three. We have three liars in here. <laughs> Incredible. I mean, my point is, like, he was terrible at the back end of the, the season, and he's the greatest quarterback on the planet. This isn't to say Josh Allen isn't good. It's to say his season, his setup, is going to work against him at the end of the season. I don't even mind drafting him. I would draft him where he is at ADP. But I'm going to look to unload him for value. Here's why. The first six weeks of the season, he's the quarterback six. The rest of the season is strength of schedule. He has the easiest schedule. He starts with the Cardinals. Yeah, baby. Yeah, that's pretty good. The end of the year is brutal. It's the 26th schedule, and the fantasy playoffs is even worse. But let's go over his setup for 2024. He has a new offensive coordinator midway through last year in Joe Brady. Joe Brady, historically, we've, we've brought this up a couple of times, Joe Brady's been in the NFL a lot, and he always ends up getting exposed. Now, he didn't have time last year. It was great. They won a lot of games. But if you look at him as a passer with Joe Brady, 
Weeks 11 through 18, he went from a 70% completion percentage passer down to a 61% passer. He went from a touchdown pace of 32 touchdowns down to 24 with Joe Brady. 40, Anthony Richardson is dreaming of that completion yeah, percentage. 4,400-yard <laughs> pace to 4,100-yard pace. If you're drafting him as the quarterback one and he finishes as the quarterback five, that's an L. Yeah. That is – it's not going to work. You have to have someone like how Too he's expensive. been lately who's been lapping the field. And you're going to say, oh, Josh Allen will be fine. But it's not that easy. You, you have someone who lost so many of his targets. Stephon Diggs is gone. Gabe Davis is gone. They, they can be the butt of jokes. We could say Gabe Stephon Davis. Diggs is – no, but, but it still matters. You just talk about total vacated targets – and it's tough. 284 vacated targets for the wide receivers is the most associated with any quarterback drafted in the top five since 2018. In that sample, 70% of quarterbacks with just 100-plus vacated targets failed to meet their ADP. And this is the first time ever that the quarterback won in ADP, which is what Josh Allen is, has all of his wide receivers drafted outside of the top 40. It's never been done before. Then you look at that end-of-season schedule – and specifically the playoff weeks where he plays New England outside in cold weather last year in New England in the fantasy playoffs. Josh Allen completed 50% of his passes. Anthony Richardson could hit that. Yeah. Zero touchdown passes. And then in week 17 in the championship, it's the Jets. Like, he's not going – I really do think he's an okay pick. But the second half of the year, there is a, an easy and obvious path for him to be – Let's say the quarterback eight. Why are you so mean? Yeah. I think something happened in my heart. <laughs> made, him, made him so mean. Um, so, look, I mean, Josh Allen's a great player. I think he'll figure things out. I mean, he had 15 rushing touchdowns last year. If he repeats that, obviously he's going to be great. Now he's stupid. I would, I would look stupid. This is a guy who's never had double-digit rushing touchdowns in his career. It's not like Jalen Hurts, who, yeah, he had 15 rushing touchdowns. Why aren't we talking about that? But Jalen Hurts as a starter has never not had double-digit rushing touchdowns. This, this was like I have Josh Allen currently slated for nine rushing touchdowns, which, which would be the second highest of his career. And that's great, but that's a huge gap. And if you're drafting him number one, he gets off to a hot start. I guess really what I'm saying is if you got him Ooh. and he has the hot start, capitalize and trade him. That's what I will be doing. Thoughts, Mike? It's, it's persuasive. It's, yes. pers it's persuasive. It's dumb. Yeah. But, but <laughs> it, okay. It, it, the hard part about fantasy football is you can't – like seeing something that hasn't happened, right? It, and, then, and then once the once history reveals itself and we look back and you go, oh, it was so obvious. Like when you call your shot on something like this, you sound like a lunatic. We'll yeah, that's fair. We'll see. We'll, we'll see if you're a lunatic. Here to zero. Here to zero, Josh. The margin Allen. between genius and, and insanity How is... mad will you be if, like, the Saints have a great year? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'll be how, so how upset. How upset are you going to be if they, like, run the like table? Like, if, if Josh Allen finishes as the quarterback one, I'll be, I'll be cheering. I'll be, I'll be happy. I will have forgotten this bold take. But if the Saints are good, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, man. I shave my head. What I will shave my coach head. Of the year? Oh, if the, we're back to this. If the Saints win 10 games, I will yes. shave my head now, on air. Oh, now that won't take long. The, yeah. the only problem with me saying that is now people are rooting for Dennis Allen. I don't like that. To shave your head, that's just like a, like a light breeze. Right, right, right. I just, I just knock them all I, out. I use a towel and I just scrub hard. <laughs> then it's gone. You guys want to do some mailbag? Oh, yeah, we do. Y'all ready? Y'all ready for the drop? Mike, you getting them ready? Can we get some lights? Can we get some lights on the house? All right. Mailbag. Mailbag. That was an all-timer. That was outstanding. It was harmonized. Outstanding. All right. We're going to do some live mailbag here on the oh, show before we stuff. give away this beauty. Oh, oh, is that a Papa Josh call out? Don't do that. No, we don't need... Papa Josh doesn't need any attention. Oh, man. All right. How you doing? What's your name? Carlos. Carlos, Carlos what do you nice got for us? Nice to meet you. 
Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. My question is, in a dynasty rookie draft, how do you decide between best player available and a positional need? Did you hear that? Ooh, you want me yeah, to repeat yeah. So it? that was in a dynasty rookie draft, best player available or position of need? How do you make that decision? What, <laughs> what is the differentiator for you? Well, I mean, I can tell you from maybe, look, maybe this is just my experience. It is not, Mike. But... <laughs> Many years in the first round, I have gone. I got, I got to get this running back. I got I, the position. I am so shallow. Yeah, sure. There's this what top five NFL draft pick, Jalen Waddle. Sure, but but you know what? I really need a running back, or I really need a quarterback. And it has been a disaster each and every time in Dynasty. You, you got to follow the money. Look, there's just – it's all about probability. Of course, not every first-round wide receiver is going to be a hit. That's, we, we know that. We've seen the NFL long enough. But the probability of a first-round wide receiver being awesome in the NFL versus a bust, for, for fantasy football, it's a good bet to make. And so it's – and then in the long term, once that player turns on – they're so much more valuable than this like RB2 on your bench. I, I just think the burn hurts more when you feel resigned to take a position versus yeah, the players it's, it's that you believe in. Never. Because if have, it does work out, okay, it worked out. But if it doesn't, you know you made the mistake at the time because you wanted you had a conviction about another player, but you felt like you had to fill a gap. I never, I never do it anymore. I take the best player available on the board, no yeah. matter regardless of position team needs are obviously very very important they're the devil they, they are the they are the devil in the sense that like i mean i've done this I, I drafted trey sermon way too high because i was desperate for a running back you drafted royce freeman yes. way too high because you were you were desperate for a running and back. i drafted and then, nobody because i had no picks <laughs> yeah. when you're saying do i draft team need or best player we're just talking about running back we're just like i yes, need a yep, running back yep. yeah and so it's like do you overdraft them and i promise you this this is the real takeaway a bad running back will never be a good pick. I mean, that's just the truth. Like, if you draft a crappy running back, it's not going to help your team. So, so don't do that if you don't believe in that player. If you actually don't believe in him, don't push him over a wide receiver you believe in. It, it won't work in the end. Best player available is the way to go. Always. I've never made a draft mistake. Next question. You can't make mistakes. I've never you, been in a draft. You miss every shot you don't take. All right. Bonjour, guys. Bonjour. 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 This is Buckwheats from Germany. Oh. Germany. All right. Wait. Down the street. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Shout out to my dynasty league. Like, okay. Like, did you come here just for the show? Yeah, I flew in yesterday. What I'm time? Half awake. What time is in Germany right now? Uh, 6 a.m. All right, my Wake man. Me up. Make some noise. Yeah. Oh, the man from Germany. Yeah, I'll do it. With Thank the, you. With the crowd control. What's your question, my friend? All right, so do you guys have like any weird rituals or superstitions <laughs> that you swear help you win your week? Weird do we have any weird superstitions or, or rituals? Things we do. Yes. Yeah. There yes. are things that have developed over Let's the years. It. There, there are things that exist in this world, in the metaphysical, <laughs> and one of the things they that, work every single time. Yeah, one of the things that has happened over time, for whatever reason is that oftentimes, specifically Jason and myself, because yeah, yeah, we've had this divisional rivalry it for years. It is insufferable. And the second the week starts, for whatever reason, we will, cons like, if something goes wrong, one play, one moment, we'll congratulate the other person on the victory. <laughs> Instantly. Yeah. And sometimes we've taken that to, like, a pre-congratulations card or yeah. gift. I have, I have. I have gotten a card and put money in it because yeah. no one wants to get – don't give people cards without money. Okay, don't do that. That's – you know what I mean? That's like, not going to get you a win. No, you got to open that card. You got to have like, money. If it's like a birthday or a victory card. And yeah, so I've, I've gotten a card before the week began. Like, congrats on your victory this week with a $20 bill inside. I find – I really do find this, and then this is anecdotally scientifically proven, that um, – People that talk a lot of trash the week leading up to a matchup, say the biggest loser who's here and is named that for a reason, you freaking loser, um, <laughs> they end up losing. But alternatively, if like when I went up against Brooks in the championship matchup instead decide to 
dote on him and buy him pizza delivered and give him gifts. Did he buy you a pizza? He didn't. Mm. And I won. Mm. So treat your opponents One with kindness. Nothing. You talk all that trash post victory. Okay. Don't hear what I'm not saying. Be a monster. But wait until you're a victor first. Kill him with kindness. Kill him with yeah. kindness. And pizza. And pizza. And pizza, yeah. Thank All you, right. sir. Thank you for Thank coming you. to the show. That's incredible. Yeah, give it up. Bonjour. Next question. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. You're not. I was, forgot. What's your name? Jose. Jose. Hi. Jose. Oh, Jason's oh, Black Polo. Oh, he's wearing nice. Jason's Black Polo. I'm, I, I was missing Jason that for Halloween? shirt. I was missing it. Yeah, I'm pretty much got the whole yeah. get up right now. Uh, shout out to the Toe Clan. Um, okay. I just want to let you guys know. Um, so my question is, if you only got to keep one my guy, the my guy is my guy, who would it be? Okay. Oh, All right. Keeping one my guy of the three my guys. The my guy easiest. Yeah, maybe Kyle Pitts is, is sneaking in Wait, for Wait, you, you didn't make me do that, right? No, no. I, I can jump in first because I know it's – for me, it, it's Kyler Murray. I just my, – my faith – that Kyler Murray is going to come through for fantasy football. A smattering of applause. Thank you so much. Uh, the I just, Kyler I, managers. I, I really believe in Kyler. Where, like, I, I mean, I believe in all of my my guys, but certain players carry higher risk than the others. And Kyler, to me, is he is in that perfect spot of low risk, incredible reward. You, you're you're going to be booing when you're playing against Kyler Murray. So that's my my guy. So I completely understand that, right? We we always have different levels of confidence in our my guys. And yes. sometimes we're just really sure of one or two and then and, and we're searching for others. My my guy is my guy. Yeah. I'm going to go with Devon Achan, and, but it what? it is it's not because I have extreme confidence. I, I am confident, but I'm, I'm much more confident in the, the floor and ceiling outcome of like Isaiah Pacheco. I, 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 don't, I don't think he's he, safer. He's safer. But when it comes to like who's really the my guy one, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm willing to take the risk. I'm willing to go and say like I don't want to be burned if I'm wrong here. And so I, I'm all in. I, and it's really one of those things where early in the offseason – I just went back and forth. Like, I, there was a point where I was like, I am, I am too afraid to take this guy. And I, I really – I came around and I said, I don't want to be the one uh, – because I believe in him. I think he's super talented. I watched him dominate last year. And if he comes out and dominates, I will be so mad at myself if I didn't just follow my beliefs. So, that's the, so he is like a, my God. Mm. Mm, my God. Mm, mm, <laughs> my, uh, yeah. my God. Are you doing Matthew McConaughey my right God. now? Matthew McConaughey did me. My God. All right. Yeah, my people. I think, I, can you guess mine? <laughs> Calvin Ridley. Yeah, yeah, it's Calvin Ridley. Yeah, yeah. We, ha we have a whiteboard at the office, and we start jotting names down, and sometimes they have a little lock next to them when you, when you have a strong conviction. And Ridley's just been down there the, all, yeah. the whole offseason. He, he, like, he really has. He was the Evan. I mean, for me, it was Evans with that conviction last offseason. Yeah. So we'll find out if I'm dumb Yeah, or peel not. back the, the curtain a little bit. He went to CVS. He bought nail polish, and he wrote it on the board in nail polish. Yeah. Super yeah. weird, but that's how He ruined strong. our board. Yeah, I don't yeah. know why I did but that. i to get a cool. new whiteboard. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your Thank question. Thank you, guys. Thank you for coming. Next question. Hey, ballers. How's it going? What's your name? Good. Chris from Jacksonville, Chris. Florida. What's up, Chris? Oh, oh. Yeah. Got a uh, keep trade cut nasty boys edition for oh, you. Oh, you know I like them nasty. <laughs> With Jerry Judy, Jacoby Myers, and Hollywood. Oh, gross. All right. Nasty boys. Oh, no. Oh, Andy. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at this. Oh. oh. Uh, for the podcast listening audience. And please turn around for our uh, live audience. This man is, is wearing a, a shirt. I got golden ticket in and I this got This man is wearing today. a shirt with Andy Holloway's face missing a tooth. <laughs> yeah, you, you get both sides. Want it. I, no? It's not happening. Okay, all right. <laughs> nasty Boys Edition. All right, Nasty Boys that, Edition. That is a bright t shirt. Yeah. That is bright. Keep trade cut, Nasty Boys. There's one boys. dark spot on yeah. it, though. <laughs>
<laughs> uh, it's where there's, um, there Jerry Judy, these are nasty boys. Jerry Judy, Jacoby Myers, Hollywood Brown. Hollywood Brown is actually another one of those hot starters, but he's injured Ooh. going into the year. Yeah. I mean, uh, did you hear they're starting to call the three wideouts in Kansas City, Fahrenheit 451? Did you see that? Real? No. What are they, they burning books? Those are three numbers. Oh. oh. Okay. You got Rashi Rice and Hollywood. And Have they read Worthy. the book? I, I, it doesn't seem like a great idea. <laughs> they yeah. might want to catch up on some literature. <laughs> Hollywood is nasty. Yeah. Uh, Jacoby Myers, like if you if you already think Devontae's risky, Myers with those quarterbacks, nasty. Yep. And Jerry Judy has never not been nasty. <laughs> yeah, this is gross, man. Why why did this so, question get in here? Yeah, you don't have any better questions? Um I you know, Hollywood is the is the clear best player of this group, but I feel like you have to cut him <laughs> yeah. because you're not drafting an injured no, guy to start. I think season. Judy's a better player. You think Jerry Judy's a better player yeah. than Hollywood Brown? Yeah. Based on what? I think the opportunity is college this year. film? <laughs> like I, I just think Hollywood, we, we're already seeing the problem with Hollywood. Like, the last two years has been injury riddled and then one play in. Like, they, at least they gave Judy the money and he's going to be on the field every play. Yeah. Uh, Jacoby Myers is the best player this of this nasty, bunch. This is nasty, okay? Look, Jacoby Myers is the best player of this bunch. He's, look, I, it, it fell off at the end of the year with Aiden O'Connell because Aiden O'Connell. Do we O'Connell, have three different answers? We do. I'm keeping Jacoby nasty. Myers. A Gardner Minshew and that, that magnificent. A mustache will do enough for Jacoby Myers. Uh, and then I will trade Hollywood Brown and Jerry Judy as my cut. I, I actually think I'm going to keep Jacoby Myers as well. well yeah, you are, because okay. he's the best of the three. I will, I will trade Jerry Judy and I'll cut Hollywood because I, 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 I didn't believe he was going to be good enough before the injury to draft a player who is actively injured going into the season. So I, I'll, uh, I'll let someone else grab Hollywood. And I'll be that guy that keeps Jerry Judy despite everything he's ever oh, done. Hopes and dreams. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you for the hey, question. Thank you, man. Appreciate thank you it. so much. And uh, no thank you for the shirt. <laughs> no, that shirt was fantastic. All right. Um, we have one more big thing to do here on the episode, which is to give away a signed Cooper Cup helmet and a signed Cooper Cup jersey, which will also come along with this. And uh, we're going to do that. Shout out to Pristine Auction for Yeah, shout out to Pristine Auction and all the stuff that we've been throwing out and all the stuff that they donated for the silent yes. auction for Fantasy Cares. So uh, big friends of the show. Here's, the, here's what we're going to do for the giveaway. We already gave it away. We already gave it away. Because uh, we threw a lot of stuff out there. And if you caught a hat, there is one hat that has a golden star under the bill. And if you have that hat, you are the winner. People are checking the giveaway. Everyone, yeah. check your bill. Yeah, check you, your, do you have one? You got it. You got the golden the star. The golden bro? star. We've got we a winner got over here. All right. But we want the hat back. Hey, a hey, number ten. Number ten. At congratulations. The end, no, congratulations. No, no, no. Oh, no, hold on. No, stay in your seat. At the end of the show, you just come up and we'll get you the. We'll, we'll get, get you, you the stuff. So, uh, again, round of applause, yeah. Pristine Auction. Can I get a round of applause for Sleeper? I know a lot of yep. you play on Sleeper. They sponsored this event. They got this event going. And um, appreciate everybody that pers yes. participated in the silent auction, ballersauction.com. You can keep bidding on that silent auction up till 11.30 p.m. tonight. And all proceeds go to Fantasy Cares. Yes. And so thank you to anybody that has done that. And thank you all. Yes. Yes. Thank you. We love you, Foot Clan. You guys 2,000 shows over undefeated. the last 10 years. 2,000 shows. Thank you. Yeah. Glasses up to the Foot Clan. A toast to the Foot Clan. Thank you all out there. We will be back in a few minutes to, uh, to come out and do a live Q&A. Anything you have, any question you have, fantasy or not, we'll be back out here in a few minutes to uh, spend that time with you. And uh, Jason, I believe it might be time <laughs> to pick up that T-shirt cannon one Yo. more time. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.
for listening to another edition of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Don't forget to visit us on the web at www.thefantasyfootballers.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.